Hello folks, I hope that you are having just the best day that you've ever had in your entire life. And if not yet, I hope it will be by the time the video is over with and the rest of your day ends. Today we're going to be taking a look at another story by Lee Brackett in this collection, The Best of Lee Brackett. Today we're going to be looking at her 1949 short story, uh, which is published in Planet Stories. Um, this is a novella length story. It's more than 70 pages in my collection. Uh, it took me more than two hours for me to knock it out. Uh, it's called Enchantress of Venus. So we're going to be returning to Venus. Um, a lot of the places that are set in this series, um, they seem to have, have they seem to be set in the same place, but we're going to be opening up in a sea called the Red Sea, uh, which previously has not mentioned in any of the previous times that she's been here on Venus. Um, and our main character is going to be somebody we're going to find out is actually from Mercury. Um, he's a Terran from, from Earth, but he was born on Mercury. And so he's going to have a physical... Uh, um, a physical nature that is not that dissimilar from that's a little bit different than the than the regular Terrans. Um, we're going to find out in the first chapter um, that he is he has got charcoal skin, he's got black hair, he's got black he's got brown eyes, um, and his physical description matches an African American, somebody from Africa, which is unusual for this area. So the credit to Lee Brackett for having a character who probably is African American. The reasons. For that is because he's from Mercury, closer to the sun, and being closer to the sun, he has a darker skin, um, and that's that's sort of the science fiction reason. Now, this is a sword and planet series, so it's 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 a low tech science fiction, sort of a science fiction meets fantasy, if you will, um, and uh, so so this is definitely low tech uh, sci-fi, sci uh, and our one of one of our primary protagonists in the first chapter is going to mention. Our, to our to our antagonist um, that he's never seen a, a Terran with with this color skin before. Um, all the other ones that he's seen have just been traditional white people. So it definitely seems like our part, our main character, whose whose name in 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 the uh, novella is Stark, although we find out that that's actually not his real name. He's actually a wild man from Mercury, named uh, named uh, Nanchala, uh, which is similar to T'Challa, who's the Black Panther. Um, so I would I'm, I'm, I would wonder if actually the real name of T'Challa actually came from uh, this guy, which is actually fairly similar. Um, who knows? Uh, but anyway, uh, but his, so his name even sounds like it's from like it's like it's like it's like it's you know sort of a traditional African name. Uh, but we'll, uh, the the wild man, the the taller man, the stronger man, the um, the guy. So anyway, he's a he's a, he's a primary point of view character. Story opens up. Um, our ship is heading to the, one of the headquarters of piracy on the Red Sea, um, over in Venus, and we're going to be. And this is not a spaceship. This is just a, this is a ship ship. And our Mercury, our our, our Terran born born via Mercury, um, is on the ship, and he is going to this place. And we're going to find out more about him uh, and the place that he's going to. Um, the the captain of the ship says that this is a place that has a bad reputation. But don't worry. Um, you'll be safe there. You'll be fine there. Uh, he offers uh, to let him to, to pay to, to let him stay for cheap, um, and keeps pressing our protagonist Stark, trying to get him to do it, but he's not doing it. He has other plans. Um, and then what's going to wind up happening is is, is that uh, uh, we're going to open our, the last paragraph. We're going to find out that we're going to find uh, that our, that our that our uh, captain is. is um, Basically, coming from behind, our main character knocks him out and throws him into the and kicks him overboard into the water. Before he does, um, our main character Stark will will take a will take a bite out of him and scar him in his head, and and it'll and, and this uh, and, and wound him badly, which will create a scar, which we'll see later. And that's pretty much it. That's the first. That's a few paragraphs, and that kind of gets you set up on what's happening now. In the story, there is. Um, a traditional sort of pulp era love triangle. Uh, one woman is a sort of the chaste, virginal woman who you should be with, um, and then the other one is the the the, the sexually loose woman who is definitely available, uh, who you should not be with. Down that way lays danger, um, and these are kind of the two sort of sort of traditional sort of uh, women. Uh, archetypes. And while I do want to credit Lee Brackett for having a, a character. Um, who's, who's, who's definitely seems, based on everything I've read in the book, the name, the, the physical description, seems to be a black character. Uh, as a protagonist, good job, Lee Brackett, and breaking out of the mold of just having white people or black people that are disposable uh, or, or race racist. And this one's definitely not a racist character. 
Uh, so I appreciate that. So good job, Lee Bracket. Um, unfortunately, the females are not the case, uh, which is unusual for a white for for a which is not unusual for that time. Uh, but again, a female rider you would you would hope uh, would break out of that mold, and she 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 doesn't. She's definitely somebody who plays to that mold uh, to her majority white to her to her white majority male audience. Uh, she knows what they like. She knows what they read. Uh, she knows what they enjoy, and you know I don't want to give her too much of a hard time. But this story does have that sort of traditional female trend. I'll link you in my comments below uh, to a video where I talk in more detail about the two sort of archetypes of the female characters during the pulp era, um, and then I give you some counter examples actually of what that's like. Um, uh, but it's just it's just it's just a part, and so when you go into the pulp era, you just know it kind of going in with eyes wide open. Uh, 1949 is probably near the end of the pulp era probably ends like proper like 1950 or 1955 when the novel begins to take over sort of the as the dominant form of of, of conversation uh for people that are writing things rather than short stories pulp magazines uh poems uh that were published therein uh uh so it probably 50 or 55 so we're getting close to the end of the pulp era proper but it's this story is definitely a pulp story it has all those sorts of things. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. I think it's a strong story. Uh, it's, a, it's a novella length stuff. It's pretty good. I read it across uh, three days. I just finished it today. Uh, so I want to knock it out for you and let you know about it. Lee Brackett's uh, Enchantress of Venus. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read it? What did you think about it? Did you like it? Uh, did you agree or disagree with my take on it? I would be more than happy to engage you with it or if you want to do a deep dive into it in the comments I would, I would be more than happy to engage you with it further in the comments below if you like this video why not hit that subscribe button there's gonna be a lot more of these that fall in fantasy science fiction and horror and this is science fiction so there you are and then finally hey i just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video we all have so many things that are happening in our lives right and we're pulled in so many different directions so the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have a great day.